Well, that kind of killed the mood, didn't it? But, um... Yeah, so... I was just gonna say... Um... Later today is some time. I do want to play other games. I've been doing so much coding and so much chess lately. I do appreciate that. Uh, Nicholas... Uh... Fielkas... Ficus. I am so tired. But he, um contributed a build script to uh, the variant or multivariant stockfish so now we're capable of producing windows builds uh, every time we commit oh that reminds me that reminds me I still have a task to do even though it's the weekend even though everything's perfectly in order even though I technically don't have any to do items um, mm -mm. my most recent branch here, Atomic uh, Passant was my initial attempt, uh, Atomic Pseudo-Legal. Um, yeah, this thing has got to get tested. So... This is branch name Atomic Pseudo Legal, um, where I think after a trillion, billion, million tries, I think I finally got the rules to Atomic Chess implemented correctly in Stockfish. And now that we've got a proper build process in place for Windows, Linux, etc., we can fix the one remaining bug with Atomic Chess. So let's do that. Um, so, atomic, damn it, I need the number. Um, do I know what this number is? I'm pretty sure I do. It's going to be the same as this number. Wait, no, it should be, but it's not guaranteed to be. <laughs> Um, no, actually, it's going to be the same as this number, because this is being tested against current master. So I can take this test, grab this number, and say that that's the correct one, which happens to be the same as this, um, which is the benchmark number for um, standard chess for the given position. We need a fast test for atomic, um, there we go, that's the commit message, which is also going to be the test message. Alright, so validate the atomic pieces actually move in the same manner as standard chess pieces move. And also, um, disallow self-mate moves that explode your own king. Um, that is the extent of what I fixed there. My goodness, this had better pass testing. Um, but also, we're going to submit... Um, oops, that's wrong. There's just so many fields I gotta fill in. Oh wait, was that a fast test or a slow test? This was 10 plus point one. So this is a fast test. Now we need atomic pseudo legal uh, slow bug fix or simplification. Uh, long time control. Um, then I need the number, which is this number. I'm going to submit that atomic dot 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 dot. Um, I think that's good. I've been slacking on doing that because there were so many other things in the queue. But that is so ready to be merged. Okay, so. Yeah. So, yeah, this fix here. Eat your heart out. Oh my goodness. We had to fix the move generator. We had to fix 
position.cpp. Uh, two functions in particular had to be fixed here. One for, um, well, actually three. One for setting the position, setting the ampersand square can't be an illegal explosion ampersand square. Two, um, move validation for checking that a pseudo legal move is also legal. It's got simplified a bit because it was immensely complex. Um, so I ended up rewriting that to be much simpler. It follows much of the same structure that was already there. I added some assertions in to test against conditions that were tested, that are tested below in the ampersand use case for standard chess. They have to be tested or asserted up here for atomic chess. Otherwise we're missing some tests. Um, I was able to take all this stuff here uh, and separate it into this, as well as the check that's done in the pseudo legal validation routine, uh, which we'll get to in a second. No, I'm sorry, I reduced this to uh, this. Uh, it's been too long since I've looked at this, unfortunately. Oh yeah, so we first check, are we blasting the opponent's king? That was something we checked way up here somewhere. If so, the move is legal. Even if we were putting ourselves in check, explosion of the opponent's king wins the game. At least for legal moves. Legal being we don't explode our own king. Um, so in the case where um, we're not exploding the opponent's king, we fall through. If there's nothing checking our king, we don't need to do any special... I'm sorry, if there are pieces checking our king after the explosion, um, then you're done. Then it's illegal. Otherwise, an explosion that does not leave you in check must be legal. Otherwise, do normal chess validation, for like castling and ampassant and other stuff. And then the rules for pseudo-legal moves got way simpler. and just became um, two things. Are we doing a capture? If we're doing a capture, we can't explode our own king. If we're not doing a capture, uh, are the kings adjacent? If the kings are adjacent, um, then your pseudo-legal move that, as long as it's moving the piece like a standard chess piece, which is checked somewhere in this whole routine, I forget where. Let's expand it out a bit. Um, not there. I think immediately above here, though. Let's keep expanding. We'll find this here somewhere. Um, where's pseudo legal start? Oh, it starts here. Pseudo legal. Okay, if we hit a variant end, then any move is not pseudo legal. Um, else, if you have a non standard move like promotion or castling, uh, check it this way. Else, verify that uh, there is a piece on the origin square. And supposing there is a piece on the origin square, make sure we're not capturing a friendly piece. And otherwise, make sure that the piece is moving like a pawn or moving um, like a normal chess piece. And then after all of that, after all those standard chess things are enforced, then we do some more things for captures. Like, am I doing a capture next to my own king? That's not legal. Am I doing a capture... Um, well, no, am I not doing a capture, but the kings are connected? If so, then don't worry about validating that you're putting yourself in or out of whatever kind of king evasion check. So, um, that was complicated enough. All right, so we're seeing. I hope the Leech Us Dev drops Stockfish in native client because Chrome will stop supporting it super soon. I assume you're talking about uh, Chrome, was it NACL or native client or whatever? Um, yeah, I think they've moved, or yeah, I think um, Stockfish also cross compiles to WebAssembly. So we're not compelled to use Chrome. If I remember right, and I, I'm not an expert with web things. Um, we all know this. At least I do. Um, but 
Yeah, if Chrome stops supporting something, we'll find some other way to deliver it. Um, and if we can't, um, then there are other options at our disposal, such as... Um, um, oh, what was it? Somebody opened an issue here lately, didn't they? Um, nope, this never made it to here. This must have only been discussed inside the Discord and the dev channel. But somebody suggested that um, for... Uh, it'd be nice to be able to do um, engine analysis of studies. And I've always been suggesting per... Well, I first asked uh, Tebow or Ornicar um, is it possible for engines to analyze studies um, if a person um, is running the engine on their PC? And he says, uh, yeah, the API is there. Um, anybody can just click on a study and um, you'll see what the web API is for submitting contributions to it. Um, so it occurs to me like, well, yeah, HTTP uh, is certainly a valid means of sending engine analysis into a study. Uh, there might be better, cleaner ways to do it. There probably are. HTTP probably isn't the right way to describe it either, but opening some sort of socket connection or however these damn web pages work, um, you could navigate to a study and type in text and it'll be submitted. Such a thing could easily be simulated from um, a desktop client. So, um, um, so the idea of being able to analyze studies and collaboratively analyze them with multiple people with computers located around the world, it's feasible. It's, uh, Leech Us provides the platform by which multiple people can spectate and concurrently analyze a game. Um, I'm not sure what it would mean in terms of if you're trying to follow the latest position and you're trying to do all that, I don't know what would happen if you had multiple people um, or multiple AIs submitting commentary on multiple positions at, simultaneously. I imagine you'd end up with something more or less like Google Docs and Google Wave and such, but um, that's a, I kind of like what Google said about Google Wave, even though they like promoted it as this big exciting thing and then scaled back their expectations in terms of saying, um, yeah, we're actually discontinuing Wave and just going to make it part of our standard products and not make it its own separate thing. It was looking pretty cool for a while, but as a way for Google to show off their technical prowess. Um, anyway. I'm babbling, and probably not too interesting at this point. Um, I keep promising that I want to get back to playing StarCraft. I'm not ready. I feel I'm not ready to do it tonight. I might take a crack at it. Hmm. I want to say tomorrow, but I don't know. Today I want to do something much more casual. Um, I guess while I'm at it, let me share, oh, what's it? Game capture. Right, try to capture this. This might get the VOD muted, but I can't do anything to stop the music, unfortunately. Okay, so apparently I can still play this game while streaming. They haven't done anything to break it just yet. Uh, properties. Yeah, let's capture this client. Alright, and then get a look at the preview pane. Okay, so my point was going to be, I still got this correspondence game going on here. I think it was January 1st I started this. Maybe not the first, but very early in January, I did start this 
um, along with about a dozen other games. Um, <laughs> Brood War, one of such games. Uh, oh wow, yeah, yeah. Laddering sounds difficult, um, but yeah, it's. I don't know why. I think I was having internet problems or something at the time, too, so I figured I'd record a stream or a video session offline where I started a whole bunch of correspondence games. Or maybe it was just an ill-attended stream or something, but it ended up being this big, hairy commitment where every ten days I get to come back and see if my opponent's moved. And I stuck to it. We finally got this freaking endgame. Um... I'm pretty sure I'm lost. That knight is... It's a big bother there. So I expect that my opponent is probably either going to give perpetual check or find a mate. Like, as I'm looking at this now, um, I don't know what to call this piece. It's a rook and a knight. So, rook d2 check. Um, oh, king a3, knight c4 is not me, because there's king a4. But I think that my opponent could perpetual check me between c2 and d2. I don't have any choice. Even prior to their previous move, rook d3, uh, it was either retreat and let my opponent you see the little line in the middle there? That line means if either king crosses that line, that's a victory. Um, so if I retreated to the second rank, surely my opponent would race across the center line and win. So I had to interpose with my knight on c3. However, at this point, um, they're just going to play rook d2, rook c2, perpetual check. If they don't, I promote on a8, and if their knight takes on a8, my king crosses the center line and wins, I'm pretty sure. Maybe I'm mistaken. Um, but anyway, that's the game that I've been playing there. Finding opponents is challenging, even though they've dropped the price of the game. Like, it used to be overpriced for the longest time, but I bought it anyway because I like what the developer was doing, and I like the concept, and the music is good. Um, the difficulty of finding an opponent is not that great, but I don't know. I still, if I had to pick whether I was buying like a sandwich or two, or buying the game, I'd probably still buy the game. You know, it was a good game. But even with them dropping the price, it's still difficult to find opponents. Um, now what was the other recent thing that I found? I want to go look this up again. Um, so, let's see. I've got some alerts here. Why are there two PGNs? Looks like they're both the same game with different PGN headers. Well, that's weird. Uh, whatever. Okay, so... I was looking the other day. Uh, I came up with a... F I found a really funny thing. Uh, there's Cook, Serve, Delicious, Bot. And then there's Cook, Bot. I want to get one of these working. I think these could be entertaining. So... Unfortunately, I couldn't get the damn video to load here. I think this could still be a fun endeavor. Um, note that I'm not streaming on creative because um, I'm not feeling that creative at the moment, but I am streaming on IRL, so you get to hang out, basically, is my level of commitment. Um, let's see, requirements. You gotta have um, a certain resolution need to modify the image paths, you need to have a Windows operating system, and then run this bot threading pie thing. So... Oh, I do have Python installed. Okay. 
So I do have the correct Python, or a version of Python, so I have some hope of being able to get this to work. I did clone the project just in case the developer decides not to support it anymore. Uh, let's download the zip file. cookservedelicious.zip Because, you know, when I get a zip file, my first thought is let's download that and see how we can wreck our computer by just running it. Now, um, cook, serve, delicious, bot, master. Obviously, it's the master branch. We don't need master there. Okay. Um, da, da, da. Readme.md is the same contents as this file. Um, so it uses image recognition. I don't know what third-party libraries it's expected to use. Hopefully it's prepackaged with the ones it needs. Um, all the text files that you could want to read are also here. So there's like cooknotes.txt. Um, nah. I want to try to run this. Even though I've not read all the code and there might be a virus hidden here somewhere. And it might give away all your passwords and who knows. But it's on GitHub. Nobody's found any viruses here yet. It's probably fine. You know? Okay, so... Uh, you need to modify all the hard-coded directories um, that are used for the images. So I think that's going to be the hard part, is to figure out how to configure the damn thing. I wish they'd put more effort into that. Um, I mean, here we have all these images, right? Serve delicious bot recipes. Um, I guess I just open all the files in this directory. Uh, there's box 0png Oh, come on. Open this with paint.net, because I trust paint.net. Um, install when I exit. Exiting now. Okay. Okay, install that, please. Oh, you can't even see all the Windows Explorer things I'm doing, because I never got my display capture going. Because, okay. I need to try to get a display capture going. Uh, window capture, no, display capture, okay, fine, wait, okay, oh, there it is, that's more like it, um, so... No need for the game capture or the browser capture at this point. You can see everything I can see. Don't start paint on it. We're just finished with it. Um, uh, yeah. I'm sure that's got some practical aspect to it. But I just want to open up all these Python files, find the path names, and replace the path names. So, edit. Because some of these have path names in there somewhere. Also, I got Flux installed, but it appears not to be doing shit here. And, like, there's always this do on transition fast or slow, and I can't figure out which is which. Um, like, I should be darker here right? I don't know. Um, I was going to say chess is hard, but this isn't even chess. Okay, so does this have path names in it? I know I looked at one of these sometime in the last week and saw a path name somewhere. That looks like a path name. C users, etc, etc. Okay, here we are. Uh, la, 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 la. Also, why the freaking heck would you put cook time delicious 
Like, that's not even what he ultimately called this. Okay. Here's the path name. Here's me replacing this path name. Uh, I'm just doing this one at a time. Also, how ridiculous is it that, like, he escapes some of these slashes with, like, double slashes, and he doesn't do it for other ones. Never mind that, though. I do have single or double quotes. I think because it's single quotes, you don't have to escape your slashes. So I think this will be okay. Um, so, yeah, I can just do a literal find and replace. Find replace edge case replace all close save um, I could have done this find replace for all documents you know um, okay save Save. Um, so what was the old value again? Game cheating. Uh, he's got another folder here other than recipes. It's num keys. Um, let's, no, let's just see if I can find num keys. Or in fact, can I find this without, can I find any of this? Find next. Okay, good. Ah. So he was inconsistent in his usage of this stuff. I don't know how he managed like to write. This couldn't have been simple. Uh, wait, I'm missing a trailing slash. My kingdom for a trailing slash. All right, we save this. Abandon ship. OK. Okay, this is what we want to find. And the trailing slash, we need that. Um, replace all and open documents. Okay, got this, got that. Yeah. There's got to be a more idiomatic way to do this. If you want other people to use your code ever, which there's something to say about just getting it done, but um, so you got recipes, right? Okay, so I just apparently found a bug or two or twenty in this. Um, I don't know. So take this plus the trailing slash and replace it with the string that includes the trailing slash. Um, I mean, I could define a regular expression and fix it that way too. Um, okay. Right, and then this, copy, paste. Uh, I didn't actually mean to paste, but I want to use N-U-M-K-Y-K-E-Y-S. Replace all in opened documents. Save. Save. Okay. Now we don't... Wait. Um, what did I just do here? 
Yeah, I want this without the num keys directory. So like that. Okay. Um fine. All right, and coding projects etc cetera, etc. Cetera. trailing slash place all um, why are all the paths absolute that would be a great question for the person who did the initial development that would be an excellent question especially because sometimes you use get current working directory so yeah I don't know um, but if it runs, it runs, so okay, he doesn't don't have any of that mega thing here. We still have it here. num.png is now gonna be found there. Oh um by that I meant of course, don't use the thing that has the word mega in it. Use my own user space, username, etc. Um, that's more like it. Okay, no examples of mega there. Okay. So, theoretically, I've made this runnable. Um, so he says to run this. Uh, what's it? Cook serve delicious bot. Um, how do I run it? Uh, run bot threading dot pi. All right. Bot threading. Okay, no module named pill. I think that's the portable image library. Um, I don't have pip installed, do I? Oh, I do. Um, anybody? I need food. <laughs> I mean, I had food already, but I got water here. Maybe that'll help. Either that or I gotta punch this into Google and ask it how this is supposed to work. Oh, you had this. Really, I should have just done all the coding on my Linux shell and then committed it all to GitHub and then checked it out from there. That would have been so much easier than trying to fix it with, um, anyway, with Notepad. Um, as proficient at Notepad as I am. Okay. Um, Python windows no module named pill i'm gonna need that in a second because oh pip install image okay we're gonna try that oh okay i did not think duckduckgo would produce such an awesome result as it did produce um that's pretty cool Is this while we wait? Do 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 King H to believe it or not. Do 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 do
do do do do do do do do do do do that's the main problem do 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 bishop d7 oh it's done bishop to e3 okay um opponent and now rook g8 queen d but that said numpy do 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 I don't like crazy queens, just do, personally. Do, do, Rook f6 immediately, queen to do. e2. This is the key, and the game continues. Oh. Well, we'll see if we encounter that issue in a moment here, now will we? Because we probably will. Win 32 GUI. Okay. Like White's position here. Oh yeah, I, I totally like White's position here. White's got like an I and an M next to his name. So White's position's pretty good. But also he seems to be up in exchange with a fortress. Um, so, so yeah, rip black. Oh, queen d7. You coward. There we go. Queen D6 check, believe it or Unfortunately, not. Queen D7 was a tempo still, late. You could have had it, buddy. Guys, you had the world at your fingertips. Yeah. Man. That was a tough... Tough break for Black there. I mean, it's all self-inflicted, but still. Um, oh, Pi win 32. Okay. Sure. I can believe that. Oops. Now looking for C5 and uh, uh, high win 32. Oh. Um, apparently that's not the right high win 32. King H1, Bishop on F4. Of course, look to C2. Wait, how do I get this? Rook to C3, Queen G6 looking very intense. Hip install. Rook to F1, okay. Rook to F8, after Rook to E1, and the game continues. B4, A6, Queen back to E3. Import F4, this, etc., etc. Download. A winning move. King oh. E5, D5, okay. Okay, and fine. Four doesn't work. D6. Rook to C2, um. check. Apparently getting Pi Win 32 installed is a bit of a bother. Wait, what? To install Pi Win 32 system files, run Python scripts this install from an elevated command prompt. Okay. I'm sure it's one of these. Okay. And it seems as though black should still be able to draw this position. E6. Man, bishop E7. Rook A to B1. Queen E7. Uh, now B4. A6. B5. Let's go. I'm going to get funky on the queen. Yeah, side. I don't know which of these. Knight D4. E5, no, I guess CP36, CP35, etc. Uh, must be like revisions of the same library. Queen D1, I probably want to use the most move. recent revision, CP36. Um, D3, check King G2. All right. and after I the probably want to use a 64-bit version on my 64-bit so hardware. Okay. Check. Bishop B4. King to E4. Knight C3. Now, why does it say WHL? I don't know what a WHL is. Right. The game just started. C6, E3, Bishop on D4. Um, Bishop D3 has been played, and Knight to D7. Castle instantly E5, Queen to E2, okay. E4. Better to play Knight C3 and F3. Fantastic. And Bishop D4. 
This move e4 now. Castle, of course. Bishop a3. Rook e8. Queen d3. C5. E5. You're going nowhere. Of course. Knight d5. Wait, did I not say show it in directory? This attack is now overwhelming. Okay, we don't need Check steam again. open. So this one, king f2. We do not require steam Check. Uh, for this. this attack uh, until we get the game running, right? Rook a e1, knight Which f5. I'm not optimistic about at this point. C8. And now rook to b1, rook to c2, b6. Yeah, download the pi whatever whl thing. Knight so D4. I've downloaded it. With check. Pip install the file. King G6. I How see. does a player drop this many rating points? What about King E2? Um, and check, copy check that out. over King to D4. desktop. Rook B4 doesn't work. Uh, what the B7. heck? Let's put it here. This rook to B8. And King All four right, and then play. say. Oh, we have to go to an elevated command B7. prompt. To, well, no, we don't. B7. The clock, guys. Um. And the game just started. What's the sliver? Pi win 32, yada yada. Right A4. A5 was the move. Oh. That the engines didn't like. It's better to play knight c3. Okay. Knight to e5. And so yeah, we in fact do need the elevated command prompt. Bishop on e7. Jeez. What? All yeah, right. So instantly, and this game is is. Um, big. command prompt. Sharp. I mean, complicated. We're on his admin. Yep, 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 yep. Queen D3. CDC users. Now rook to B1. Uh, uh, gaming. There we are. Desktop. Cook, style. serve, so delicious bot. Says, I'm gonna slowly march up the board. Pip install. Pi win 32 so stuff. And of course. Wait. All right. AMD 64 C4, wheel is not C4, a supported wheel C5. on this platform. Alright. Um, I can believe that. Um, then, but now, wait a minute, what's going on? Was played? He's a fantastic player. We, we've seen yeah, I suppose you'd have to have an AMD check. processor King to use three. the AMD thing. And now the move Queen E5. The um, Guys. And the game just started. Knight of three. Knight Let's go six. back. No, you can't believe it in two. Knight bd7. Now castle. Bishop e2 is possible. c6. Uh, knight c3 now. I win 32. And now castle f4. AMD 64 and then win 32. Oh, fine. We'll try the win 32 version. Knight f6. Bishop going to g2. Knight e4. Queen then went to f3. F6. Very dynamic play by Black. Rook C8. Now C4. Check. And after King to H8. But I suppose set, it didn't need to navigate both explorers over there. Rich. Rook F to E1. Play Rook E7. Um, King to H6. The move Rook cut. to E1. Now the move B5. And now Paste. And Queen C7. You'll be surprised how many people screw this up. It's just incredible. Bishop to E5. D6. Check. Okay, it's not a supported Check. wheel on this platform either. So this must be the compatibility issue you were referencing. Knight to F6, knight to um, C5. Bishop to G5. Python. That the engine gives here. Dash knight install from an elevated now, command prompt. So doing, fine, we'll do literally what it suggests. Going, D4, Forget what F6. Stack Overflow and says. H3, which was played, um, C8, Queen B3, B5, Knight D5. Castle is a normal attempt here. Castle E6. Again, Knight E3 could be thought about here. Queen on C7. Simple positional idea. By the way, it's not even that simple. Queen C5. Python. Uh, Pi win. Queen lands on E5. And the game continues. King G7. It's time to start some can't find me operation queen d1 that's too bad played. and after king to h8 it's going to be merciless checks okay king h1 instantly went um, back to g8 right now going into the crazy line rook g7 queen then went to f3 e5 rook now why did i download F6. these like rook d2 d4 was a nervous move and a greedy move in this position hmm. but still after rook to e1 rook to c8 a5 a3 a4 yeah, i don't Look know off, guys this doesn't seem to install. 
I've probably annoyed people with Maurice, so let's turn off Maurice. Maurice persists. Oh, there's the game. Okay, so yeah, there goes Maurice. I don't know how to install this stuff. Um, because pip install is failing. <sighs> so whatever. Okay. Um. We're gonna try this in Google. So, yeah, I don't know if this is going to work. Uh, Windows platform, I usually go for the executables. Okay. Oops. Shoot, sorry about that. Yeah. Okay. I did get the link though, so I can type that in over here. Unfortunately, my uh, chat device and um, my computer aren't hooked up together. But, um,. Python dash V two seven thirteen. Okay. Whoops. Uh, download URL would be this. So the advice that was given in that other thread was just use the build. Use the executable. Sure, we can do that. No thanks. Um, so, this are. I'm pretty sure this is not an AMD 64, if I remember right. Whoops, system. Oh my goodness. Really? View processor info. Thank you. Um,. I could rename my PC. Just what I'm looking at doing, you know? Processor, it's an Intel chip. So the AMD 64 instruction set won't work. But uh, I could use the 2.7 Python build. That would work. Three, two, one. Blast off. And if this fails, maybe I just go for, um, okay, it must be taking a while to validate that or something. Are you sure you want to run this? Python extensions to Windows, access to the 32 API, author, email, etc., etc. What? Python 2.7 required, which was not found in the registry. Okay. That's not cool. Um. Okay, does my administrative shell prompt? Did I just install? No, it's not single user installation. It's a multi user installation. Uh, what? Python? Yep, unfortunately, I don't get that beautiful Linux command in my Windows shell. Uh, so, 
Um, Python command line file location. So here it is, Windows. It's located somewhere. C Python 2.7. How hard is that, Windows? Is that too difficult for you? Uh, okay. Ended a simple registry hack to work around problem. Um, okay. Yeah. Well, that's cool. Um, just means I got to be a little bit creative here. I should probably read the instructions, right? If you have a 64-bit computer, if you install a 32-bit version of Python, you must install the 32 version of PyWin32. Um, so I probably have a 64-bit Python, but I don't have a 64-bit AMD processor. Um, I mean, I could try it. There's no freaking way it's going to work. <laughs> Let me try it. Yeah, that's cool. Um, I don't blame you. I think I might give up on this particular bot and opt for the other one that's Linux based. Um, I just was trying to be lazy and do the Windows thing first. That is just point and click and point and click and everything you want is only a few trillion clicks away. Oh, never mind. Here it is. Sure. Yeah. Don't know how an AMD 64 thing installed on an Intel chip, but. Sure. Sounds legit. Finish. Okay, cool. Uh, all right. Um, so, yeah. Uh, we didn't need this prompt. Just run bot threading, he says. It's all you need to do. It's that easy. Um, numkeys num1.png. Now, see users gaming. It's oh. Hey, what? Why are these things double escape, but those aren't? Whatever. I need to fix my paths now. But. That's nothing to do with this library or that library. Or with where Python's installed. Uh, or this downloads directory. Don't need this stuff here anymore. Let's close that. Um, so now I need to look for... Uh, num keys num one. I actually should look at the line number of the error. Not that I'm at all optimistic, but uh, site packages image at pi failed and open. Yeah, at bot threading dot pi. Um, twelve sixty five. Oh wait, bot oop was the one he said doesn't even work. So don't bother with it. Um, but can I just jump to a line number? Nope, control L is not jump to line. It's control something to jump to something, something, something. But, um, twelve sixty-five, twelve, uh, <laughs> sixty-five, compare images. Right, in compare images, um, 2530. Boop, 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 boop. 
Wait. There's not 2,530 lines of this code. Okay, so I did something dumb. I still need to just look for num1, because ultimately that's what caused us to fail. Um, okay, num1's only listed there once. It's up here, too. Well, there's num.png. There's box0. I was looking for num1. It's only once listed in each file. So... And this is just for building a histogram. Like, this is not for anything important. This is just for a little one-off side thing that nobody cares about. Um, see users gaming desktop, cook serve delicious bot num keys num1.png, which totally is a valid file name in Windows Explorer. It's just that. Um, that if you try to do this in a programming language, it's like you haven't escaped all your characters. Copy. But yeah, if I just try to put this on here. Oh, it's actually not a valid file name. Um, so what? Um, Okay, so it's actually the double slashes which are killing us here. Um, how the fuck does this work? Did I see a double slash here? No, I didn't. Why? I, I need to take a closer look at this code. When I'm actually awake, and when like the screen is not this blinding white color that makes it impossible to read anything. Um, but interesting. I'll get it somehow. I'm going to hit the washroom. Don't get lonely while I'm gone.
Okay. So. Yeah, I can try C folder, etc. instead. Yeah, just using slashes instead of backslashes, because my goodness. Alright, so we're going to replace double backslash with slash. Okay. And more controversially, we're going to replace a uh, single backslash with slash. Because we're feeling ambitious. Thankfully, there's nothing in the host's file. In fact, I don't need that open. Um, Uh-oh. Hooray for find and replace. Okay. I guess at this point we can say we feel modestly optimistic about this. Um, so much so that I'm going to put us back out of this screen capture mode. And, um, yeah, we don't need the, well, I don't want to get rid of display capture immediately. It's going to go soon, but not this instant. So we got this up in the background while I get steam rolling. Sorry about this. I need to put my mic back to where it should be. Of course it spins. Why would it not spin? I'm just trying to put it... There it goes. It's fighting back. I want this mic positioned and oriented. There we go. So... Let's try cook, serve, delicious, play. Um, cook, serve, delicious. I like my version better. Render, full screen, anti-aliasing, etc. Sure. Sounds good. New game. Let's cook. Standard difficulty. Okay. Um, now, you want to see the game now, don't you? It'd probably be a good exercise, just for those faint of imagination, if I actually captured the game, you know? It's more exciting than notepads, so let's make sure we capture the right window. Okay. Um, so I'm just looking at my browser for one second. And yeah, I don't see any test notes here, so sure. Oh, I'm gonna press the pause button or hit escape to pause the game. Get your prep stations. Press the number one to start the order. Now, should I not expect this to have done something already? This is the point where I have to, like, RTFM. Um, but I would expect the bot to be, like, screaming things left and right here. Um, mm -hmm. Let me try starting up the bot again. Okay, 
so... I mean, it was running. Now, the disclaimer that was offered is you have to play this in 1080p, which I believe I am doing. Um, if not, that's my bad. You need high settings, you need to modify the hard-coded directories. Um, simply run it. Huh. It does say I have to play full screen, but the game doesn't work full screen. Wait, what does this say? Okay, I can't see the game running full screen because my entire monitor goes white. But let me see if I just zoom in on OBS. What do I see here? Oh. You didn't quite get that perfect. Let's try it again, says the game. Okay. Well, so that means the program did something. Okay. Wait, uh, my input's blocked. Okay, let me terminate. Oh, I can't even access the game at the moment. Let's try that again. Um, let me just get through the, the tutorial and then see if the bot can play the actual game. Capturing? Yes, it is. New game. Let's cook. Standard difficulty. All right. Cool. This is pointing out how you can click on the things to serve customers. More complex food. Yeah, you can have a meat patty. And wait for that to cook. Alright, and then we could say meat, lettuce, bacon. I'm going to be a rebel here and do tomatoes and then cheese. Never expected that, did they? Alright. So, yeah. Anyone familiar with the game already knows all this stuff. Yep, yep, yep. No, I agree. That did seem surprisingly stable. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Cool. Alright. Next, next, next. Been there, done that. Go to main. Um. Ah. I need to activate my menu, but I have to put things on the menu first. Um. One, sure, okay, back to foods, pretzels, sure, okay, let's go back, beer, why not, and, um, hmm. oh, this requires a fryer, and this requires a fryer, um, I don't suppose um, it could handle this. In fact, the recipes page did suggest it knew what this was. So, all right, let's go back to foods, back to main, build a menu. One, two, three, 
four healthy foods. Cool. All right. Patch notes 3.2. Steam controller DualShock 3. Mapping supported. That's spiffy. Uh, fun CSD2 teaser was added. Uh, some bugs were squashed. Okay, cool. Nice. Um, yep, yep, yep. Add to your Steam wish list today. Welcome. Yeah, this explains the email interaction. Cool. Good luck on your opening. <laughs> chef Risotto, 11 star Iron Chef. Wishes you good luck. You're gonna need it. All right. Full screen. Oh no, we have one dissatisfied customer. Oh, come on! We saw something earlier. Alright. Um, what if I try it this way? Okay. Um... Yeah, clearly this bot needs some practice or some help. Yeah, so... Yeah, I don't know what's going on there. We did see it do something during the tutorial. However, after that, um... I just need to add more print statements into this Python script and see if I can figure it out. Ah, <sighs> so... Um, I need to update my status. Cook, serve, delicious. Okay. Um. So that more accurately describes what we're doing than what was previously there. Uh, however, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I need to start the bot before starting the game. That doesn't seem to make any sense. Um, Alright, let me put the screen capture back on. Display capture back on. So, last time I terminated the script, um, it terminated in here. It compare images. Yeah, I don't know. I'm at this point. I'm too exhausted to take it further. Um, which means, I guess, I'll have to try more at this offline. Unfortunately, uh, it had great aspirations and ambitions. Um, that all said, the easier solution might be to go with option two here, which is cookpot. But this requires Tesseract, uh, the image recognition library. But this says it only works on Linux. I suspect what that means is that it's only been tested on Linux. And that Tesseract is probably a pain in the butt to install on Windows. If there is a Windows library for it. Um, but I might have better luck trying to get this working. I don't know. Or some hybrid of the two, who knows. I apologize for not being as successful as we hoped with this. Or that is, not being successful at all. 
but at least getting the libraries installed for image recognition. Part of the reason I wanted to do this is because think of all the amazing games you could play if you could do image recognition. Um, you could take quite a few Steam games to a new level with this kind of stuff and then add Twitch integration beyond that. There's all kinds of fun things you could do. Um, yeah! Yeah, Oid knows what we're talking about. Yeah, I... He finally did it. And he swore me to secrecy about the damn thing. I'm like, come on. Yeah. He wasn't able... Yeah, he had technical difficulties. We'll put it... We'll express it that way. Um, so, yeah, he ended up just playing Magnus. Oh, gosh. That's gotta be so scary, honestly. Um... Yeah, I think most of us would be a bit nervous about it. Um, so, I actually looked... Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, my thoughts on this is I could use his ideas to improve my opening and end game play if I put in a ton of computing time to analyze lots and lots of games. Um, but it's just impractical at the moment. Um, it's much more practical for me to sit by and wait for somebody else to do the work. Um, oh yeah, yeah, no, I get it that... Right. No, the difference is that, um, let me turn down the music here. The music here is a bit much. In fact, I could turn that off. You could still hear it through my mic, though. Let me turn that down, too, then. Okay, that's more like it. Yeah, so how is it any different? Uh, the short answer is, like, it's entirely possible it's not any different. Um, but it's also possible that it might be. Um, it really depends what the model is. It would be very surprising if the computer came up with a model that differs from what any book's going to tell you. Um, but you know, if it did, you'd be the only one who knew it. So... Um, I mean, that's one way to get ahead of the curve. Get that little extra edge if there is some trick somewhere. Um, yeah. Um, right, right. You have to run the experiment with a large enough data set and validate it and Make sure you got prog make, are making progress on the whole thing. Um, I actually did have a stream earlier before my computer decided to reboot itself, um, where I explained just kind of my thoughts on the matter. It was more a stream of consciousness than anything else because I didn't have a lecture prepared. Um, but I think the condensed version of that lecture stream of consciousness thing would be um early chess programmers thought that they do great things by defining ways that computers could think like humans and then ultimately in the late 70s it was found that um computers do really great at chess if you just throw more hardware at it and i think the pendulum is going to swing the other direction that with data mining um, you'll see more qualitative analysis um, and less brute force approaches to things. Um, so I'm thinking that there is some merit to it. I think some novel ideas will come from it. Um, we might find that, I mean, you might find like theoretically like the stone wall is just 
hugely advantageous in a way that nobody's ever thought of before or that the bong cloud wins by force or not something like that but like you might see like some subsets of chess are more or less promising than originally thought um yeah i mean you have komodo and stockfish and all them making incremental improvements but it's maybe possible by radically departing from that model you might find some positions that are actually fortresses you might find a way to identify what's a fortress position you might find a way to break down what was formerly thought to be a fortress and just isn't um those sorts of training algorithms aren't going to excel at more qualitative sort of analysis um yeah even table bases have given insights that's true right i think that like within a decade you'll probably find that this sort of analysis will um take existing table bases and maybe have them double the number of pieces and come up with general rules that just like solve every end game or at least some subset of them um uh, and you might find some openings that are just um found to be much better or much worse than we originally thought that's something stockfish or komodo is never going to find yeah it, it takes an incredible amount of computing effort to make that possible um yeah so that, that's kind of why i'm like too lazy to jump on the bandwagon at the moment just one because i think somebody else is going to try to do it and so i can um watch them and learn from what they do and two it just requires an insane amount of computing effort um yeah yeah i don't know i think more people are going to have to experiment with it um for us to figure out how well it scales it's really hard to like it's really easy to be critical and say oh that'll never work and i'm hedging on the other side saying no i think it'll work i just don't want to bother doing it <laughs> um And that's like the most wedge position ever because it alienates everybody on both sides. So this issue that has more than two sides. One side is going to say, of course, this idea works. And the other side is going to say, this will never work. And I'm taking like this, this position that is so far, I don't know. It's a position nobody else is going to take um i i'm not gonna i'll say what he publicly said is that he might take it up in the future i'm not gonna judge his character um there's no point in me doing that um i like the fact that he published his research that takes balls to do um and it's not easy like it's one thing to say in some of his early articles talk about this more philosophically like is this even learning chess and then some of his um later articles go into much more technical depth about what he's doing with it um yeah i'm, I'm hopeful that um either more people individually will try or some kind of platform will come along something more like uh, the open ai gym but not collaborating with facebook and microsoft something more ambitious than that that scales better um i feel like sometimes somebody's gonna do something with this um I did learn that the giraffe AI author, uh, that giraffe tried to take a similar approach with neural networks 
evaluating positions in large data sets, and it only played at an international master level. So that kind of should say from the outset of this project that it was doomed, like it's not doable in a month. But um, it's hard to know that in advance if you don't know everything, I guess. Um, uh, yeah, I guess the that's the whole goal is just coming up with a superior heuristic. Which, I mean, that's like something any chess player would do. Like, come up with a better way to... I don't know. <laughs> Learn from the collective human experience of chess, but then try to amplify that in some crazy way. Um, yeah, right. Well, you'd have to come up with a superior heuristic, and then come up with a heuristic for training a person based on that heuristic. It's, yeah, it's... Well, it's possible that, like, whatever this heuristic comes up with might not be something that is practical for computers. Um, let me get away from this screen. Um, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's very highly improbable that practical results come from it. Um, no, that's okay. That's totally fine. I was trying to figure out a way to get this to play the game for me. Um, been at it for like an hour here. I was about to quit on it anyway. So, um, but yeah, but get away from this. I mean, just having that OBS window visible. That OBS window was ridiculous. Uh, yeah, I mean, this this looks like way more fun in the interim the, or for right now until somebody um, else tries to hop on the uh, chess bandwagon thing and come up with a I don't know it's such an enormous project and that's um, when I briefly had a chance to talk with Max about it I was telling him that like this is huge you know um, so Yeah, no, I, right, we, yeah, we humans and computers still need shortcuts, um, we cut corners in places because we can't possibly do everything, um, ah, uh, I wish I had an analogy at the ready, I do. Either a chess analogy or a computer analogy. I mean, computer analogies are easier to come by here because, like, people have, are familiar with how computers work and how they used to work, but that doesn't change anything about information theory. Um, yeah. I guess, like, yeah, we've matured with chess knowledge to a point far beyond what Capablanca um, and his contemporaries had. So, yeah, the idea that we're going to, like, overturn endgame theory um, is a bit crazy. But no, I think that there are... There's got to be some endgame positions where this sort of knowledge um, would lead us to learn things that aren't obvious at first. Um, actually, I think the most practical application of any of this would be trying to target a player's style and figure out what it is that you should be playing against that particular opponent. Now, granted, databases can help with that sort of thing already, but you might be able to figure out, I don't know, something. There's probably some very limited application of the idea that um, just hasn't been thought of yet.
Um, it's not as much as saying you're going to solve the entire game all at once, but there's got to be some kernels of truth out there that just haven't been discovered yet that if discovered would be important. Um, and it seems while we can still learn from human experience and people playing games, at some point um, computers are going to discover things too. Um, but yeah, databases are pretty cool as they stand right now. Uh, yeah. Right. I, yeah, I don't know if any of it's ever going to be practical. Um... If anything, there might be some way to, like, teach children based on, I don't know, not just teaching children who are new to the game, but maybe there are people with special needs or something that just have a different way of learning things. And this could help teach them in a different way that's more customized to how they think. I don't know. There might be some practical application somewhere. Um, there's, I mean, yeah, the sky's kind of the limit, but also you're not going to make any progress if you don't come up with an objective way of testing this. So, yeah, there's, I don't know what else to say. Um, <laughs> yeah I mean there's only a finite number of chess positions so what can you do being a little bit facetious there but yeah I mean um no a while ago I actually wrote a pawn structure um serializer that you can use to try to identify whether two pawn structures are similar and their degree of similarity. Um, so I should try. Um, I don't know. I should try using that in combination with his stuff. And I think ultimately, um, I'm surprised Chess AI hasn't gone this direction. I think an ensemble method is probably a really reasonable method for machine learning. That is, if you were to take every chess engine and make their collective input and output um, be the input for um, a, I don't know, just a neural network. You could have that neural network decide which engines to listen to in which categories of positions. Um, so, I don't know, I think that is probably more promising in the short term. I don't know in the long term. Um, maybe there are some discoveries out there still waiting to be made. Oh yeah, no, there's a ton of overlap, sure. But it seems a lot easier writing a neural network than uh, taking all the lines of code from every program and trying to find some way to integrate them all. Um, but yeah, if you had a powerful computer, um, you'd probably make some discoveries that way. Actually, I wonder if you could solve horde chess um, using the giraffe chess engine. That could be entertaining. Uh, yeah, that's it's impressive. Houdini's uh, not been at the top for a little while, so it's pretty cool to see to or pretty cool to see that result.
although all the leaders of that tournament are so close together. So I don't know what's to become of all that. Um, yeah. They're, all the results are so close. Um, sorry, my mind did this lateral thought here. Where was it? I made a recommendation for how to do tournament tie breaks on Lee Chess. I don't know, the only word in common between what you're speaking and what I'm thinking of there is tournament. But I made a recommendation. I don't know if it's any good or not. Um, so there's a consensus here that tie breaks shouldn't be decided by rating gain. But I like looked at um, what how FIDE does tie breaks, and looked at how Lee Chess does tie breaks, and um, well, more importantly, how Lee Chess does arenas. And you're all familiar with. Um, the hot streak, double point scoring, berserk, and all that. Um, and I tried to come up with some rules kind of loosely based on the FIDE stuff, but also considering that this hot streak thing completely messes up the idea of um, trying to do a tie break that's based on wins. And I came up with these rules, I guess. Um, I don't know if these make any sense or not. Um, I mean, I think they do, but I might have missed something obvious here. Suggesting that you have, um, I don't know how to pronounce that, Buchholz? Um, just summing up scores of opponents of each played game. Um, the greater number of games played with black. Um, and then head-to-head, -head and then win count. Um, okay, your tiebreak suggestion would just be the win percentage. Whichever score had the better percentage. Interesting. Yeah, you could. There's all kinds of ways you could do this. Um... I kind of like the, I tried to take some of the suggestions here that FIDE uses and see, like, is there some way I could adapt them here? Um, yeah, win percentage, I guess um, that's certainly useful. Although it doesn't consider who the opposition are. Um... Oh, yeah, no, Lee Chess's <laughs> system is based on, like, rating gain, which I'm like, no, no, that's not appropriate at all, especially if you look at how the rating is done. Um, yeah, I guess what I was trying to reward is somebody who plays against many difficult opponents, um, and no, tiebreak criteria number two here somebody who kept getting the black pieces. I, I don't know if tournaments, like, bias based on that or not. Or, or I don't know if they make sure you get the correct number of whites and blacks when you're playing an arena event. But it seems like somebody would complain about that sort of thing. And somebody would complain about, um, look, I was playing difficult opponents the entire event, and then this other guy just walloped the people that were ranked 20th through 1,000th or something and just scored tons of easy points that way. And meanwhile, I've been playing against opponents who all are in the top 10 standings or something. So that's the sort of thing I was trying to um, get at there. Oh, hey, Isaac. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think I read your comment here, too. Or... I don't remember. 
But yeah, my own perspective is like this is a reasonable way to do tie breaks. Um, no, if two people are tied, it just means that one person could have late joined and scored, like, a, I don't know, he could join a marathon event and only play, like, the last six hours, and for the first four of those hours, you're not going to get paired with any top ten player. You're just going to be racking up points against all the lower rated players. Now, granted, some of those are dropping out of the event, but yeah. Um, color is determined. All right, the same way as the lobby. That's good. That's good. Um, yeah, everybody's playing in the same duration. <laughs> yeah, if you late join in a marathon, you're not getting top 10. You will still tie break somewhere, but I guess we don't care about that. Um, and even at the top, like tie breaks don't happen that often. So I guess we're not talking about marathons, but still. If you have a multi-hour event, I guess top scores do tend to be quite divergent there too. But if there were a tie, what would you want to do? Yeah, so I guess we just care about the top three. So you were pointing out win percentages being something you thought might be useful. I was suggesting, well, it kind of matters, like, the sum of your opponent's scores. Meaning you're consistently playing against difficult opponents, so get credit for that sort of thing. Um, but that is good that um, this number two tiebreaker is something that will usually be tied. Um, and I expect that tiebreak one would probably be something that would separate any players anyway. Um, yeah. Right, so you can get paired every other game with the opponent. Um, sure. Yeah. Now that's good to list out some scenarios there. Yeah. One guy goes 10 out of 11. Our guy goes 10 out of 20. But they both won 10 games. I, I think... Assuming they all face the same opponents, um, I'd give it to the guy who went 10 out of 20, because he's been playing the whole event. Um, I mean, yeah, 10 out of 11, spectacular performance, nice reigning gain, congratulations on that, but um, I don't know. Oh, if they both played the whole event, and one guy just played faster than the other. Um. Um. Well, I think in this case, um, if, yeah, if the 10 out of, t oh, I see what you're saying. So, yeah, if a guy just resigns against everybody stronger, and still somehow manages with the arena scoring system that gives double points for wins. Somehow he still gets a score of 10. Um, how does this happen? Yeah, arena scoring makes it very unlikely that somebody's going to succeed at that endeavor. Um... Because you need to have two wins in a row just to start a streak, and then after that you streak. So, but yeah, I, I mean, I kind of get where you're going with this, though. Even if it's not a perfect example, it's like, sure. Somebody just resigns against high-rated players. 
and still somehow manages to achieve one of the top three positions. Um, I wonder. Yeah. It's certainly challenging for ties to occur. Right, I think one of the thoughts I originally had was like based on minutes played. But that doesn't account for the quality of the opponents you're playing against. No, that's a fair point, though. Yeah, you might... <laughs> now, I have tried this strategy of playing, like, wildly dubious openings against strong opposition that, like, has some... If I think I'm going to get outplayed anyway, play some completely nutso gambit and hope that I get some crazy tactic and it just works. That's not the same as resigning early, but it has a similar effect. Um, but in so trying that, I got my like worst tournament performance ever. Because the arena system really punishes that sort of behavior. Um, I missed that. Didn't see that event happen. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you're really going to do it based on ratings, you'd want to do it based on your performance rating rather than based on the rating change. Um, but I don't know. I, I still think, well, let me see. If you were to do it based on performance rating, that would kind of address my number one point as well. Kind of, but not really, because not all games are equal. Um... But yeah, maybe it's just way more convenient to do based on performance rating than based on uh, Bucolt's score. Because doing that comp computation for every player is going to be... Oh, it's going to take a little bit of processing power to churn through that for a large tournament. I guess the same is true of performance rating. 